Hi there. Today I'm going to start a new course about semantic manager software that can be used to program any PLC of S7, 300, and 400 series of Siemens company. In this video, after a short introduction, I'll explain my PLC hardware. And after that, I'll show you a simple wiring diagram. Finally, I'll explain how a simple program works in ladder language. All right, let's start the video with this industrial automation pyramid to know what's the role of semantic manager or S7300-400 PLCs in industries. As you know, in the lowest level of the industrial automation pyramid field, there are lots of electrical equipment such as push buttons, thermocouples, transmitters, motors, signal lamps, and other equipment. Naturally, we can't check all of them simultaneously and continuously. Today's PLCs are often used to accomplish this task. PLC is an abbreviation of Programmable Logic Controller. These devices help us to implement automatic controls in industries. Well, beside PLCs, some devices visualize industrial process for us. We call them Human Machine Interface, or HMI. Both of them need to be programmed by a computer. In this tutorial, you'll learn how a PLC of S7300 or 400 series of Siemens company can be programmed using semantic manager software to control an industrial process. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Okay, first of all, let me say every effort has been made to ensure our videos as accurate as possible. However, there may be mistakes about typographical line in content. So, our videos should be used as a general guide, and not as the solution. Also, we do not warrant or guarantee any of the products described herein, and we do not warrant or guarantee any of the equipment or programs described herein, or accept liability for any damages resulting from their use. Therefore, the viewer is warned that electricity and the constructions of electrical equipment are dangerous. It's the responsibility of the viewer to use common sense and safe electrical and mechanical practices. Alright, let me introduce my hardware. The main part or module of each PLC station is its CPU, which is an abbreviation of Central Processing Unit. Actually, the CPU is the brain of the PLC. The CPU is the home for PLC logic, memory, and communications. Like the human brain, which is the source of all logical decisions, memory, and communications to the other parts of the body or other human brains. The CPU is where the PLC program is stored. I use a CPU of uh, S7300 series, CPU 315-2DP. If you don't have any CPU of S7300 or 400 series of Siemens company, don't worry. You can use PLC SIM software to simulate and test your programs. Now, let's learn different parts of a CPU. First, these indicators determine the status of the CPU and also some errors in the PLC station. On the right side, the bus fault LED 
indicates that there is an error in the system network, like a bad contact in one of the communication connectors, or there is an overlap between the addresses inside its network. On the left side, the first LED SF or system fault indicates there is an error in the system. This error could be software error, like an error in programming, or hardware error like a power loss of one of the input modules. Okay, let's continue to learn what the other LEDs are. My CPU uses an external backup battery. The second LED indicates the connected backup battery is okay or not. When the next LED is green, it means the CPU is powered and an appropriate 5 volts is generated for the logic circuits and also for the bus for transferring data. When the fourth LED is steady yellow, it indicates that at least one of the appeals, inputs or outputs is forced to on or off. Okay, the run LED is on whenever the CPU is working properly without any troubles and flashes in the startup of the CPU. Finally, when the CPU is in a stop mode or there is a software or hardware error, the stop LED is steady yellow. Note that for a memory reset request, it flashes slowly. Well, after the indicators, this MPT slot can be used to insert a somatic micro memory card. The next important part is this micro switch. I can use that to change my CPU mode among run P, run, stop, and memory reset. When the run P or run mode are selected, PLC executes its program. But there is a little difference between these two modes. When I put the micro switch in run P position, CPU can accept download a new program from my computer. But when I select the run mode, PLC will reject any changes and also the download option. Note that newer CPUs don't have run P position. They only have the run mode, but it's essentially the same as run P mode on all their CPUs. Naturally, when the stop mode is selected, the CPU doesn't execute its program. Now, let's see how I can reset my CPU. First, I select the MRES mode about 2 seconds. Then, I select the stop mode and again the memory reset mode. Now, my PLC has reset without any program. Finally, at the bottom, you can see the order number of my CPU. Behind my CPU door, I access to its battery backup, its power supply connector, and also two RS-485 ports. I use the first one to connect Semantic Manager software to my PLC, and use the second one to connect my PLC to an HMI. After the CPU, I can use different types of modules for different purposes. I use six signal modules to receive or send digital and analog signals. Note that I can see the specifications here and also the order number at the bottom of each module. Note that there are lots of CPUs and modules related to S7300 and 400 series of Siemens company. I recommend that to read their catalogs carefully. For example, here I can see some specifications about my CPU. Or in this user manual, I can find useful data about S7300 modules. For example, let's see the wiring diagram of a signal module which has eight digital inputs and eight digital outputs. Now, after installing and wiring modules based on the catalog, 
Let's see how a PLC program works. Like the previous diagram, this module supports eight digital inputs and eight digital outputs. I can assign these addresses to these inputs outputs with Semantic Manager software. Now consider this simple program inside the CPU. It works like this simple circuit. Well, when I press the first push button, 24 volts appear on the first input. Then its correspond contact in the program, I0.0 change to close. Therefore, the CPU turn on its first output, Q0.0, like the electrical circuit. All right, I've explained my hardware and also how a simple program works in a PLC. In the next video, I'll explain memory structure in Siemens PLCs. And after that, I'll start a simple project using Semantic Manager. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.